Um, good morning. I'm sorry to be a bit late. I was here yesterday deputizing for the chair. I'm here again deputizing for the chair, Professor Julian. And um, we started our one 10 minutes late yesterday. Um, I, I think it's because we had a number of school children who had to assemble. Um, so I, I was hoping that you would be true trainees and be a little late, but I, I am the only true trainee this morning. So again, I must apologize for being a little late. Did I say good morning? I did? Well, good morning again. Uh, my wife tells me sometimes that I am not as, as couth as I should be, you know, so I have to make sure that I say it even twice. Uh, Mr. Philip Bastianen, Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And uh, I, want to, I want to also say thank you, as the moderator did, for lending us these two experts. Um, Mr. Rud Skuldeman, I, I, I hope I pronounced all the names right, eh, because I don't like people to mispronounce my name, especially when they call me Imbert, because <laughs> Imbert is somebody else, and I want to make the distinction. So um, if I do mispronounce any of your names, please forgive me. Um, Mr. Jan Royaka, I think I have that pretty good, pretty good. Um, welcome, and again, thank you for giving us of your expertise. Then I go to the locals. Ms. Ria Ramdeen. I I thought she might have been Maria, but when she told me her name, I thought I heard Maria, but I said, just let me make sure. So Maria is not here on your program. It's Ria Ramdeen from Simcol. We have the chairman of Simcol, Mr. Shamshad Mohammed. I think I can pronounce that name. I'm trainee enough to know all those names. Trinidad. And, uh, I asked Dr. Driver, how do you really pronounce the name? And he said, Dax will do, Dax is easier. So Dax is easier. So Dr. Dax Driver. Um, thank you um, also for sharing this um, symposium with us. The symposium is a joint, sort of joint venture project about UDT and the Energy Chamber. So UDT. UDT, as you know, is referred to as the National University. And we are here at the Point Lisas campus, the energy campus of UDT. And it's very fitting that this, this Waste Energy Symposium is being held here and at this time, because we are in the, the CARICOM month of, of of energy, if you like. And uh, although Trinidad and Tobago has not paid very much attention to alternative energy, um, because we have natural gas, which we use for power generation, we have to, to think more and more along the lines of alternative energy. And this is a very significant form of alternative, alternative energy, a waste of energy, because it's, it's threefold. It gets rid of waste, and uh, as you know, because of rapid industrialization, commercialization, <coughs> sorry, residential developments, etc., the, the amount of waste that is produced in a, I would say, a developed, developing society like Trinidad and Tobago, is increasing. And uh, the availability of, of land for more landfills is um, also decreasing because of those very um, commercialization, industrialization, and residential activities. 
So it is threefold. Once, one, we are protecting the environment. And by the way, the environment really doesn't require protecting. You know, the environment will continue and go along, and we will be extinct, and the environment will be there. We really are protecting ourselves. So when we say we are protecting the environment, it, it's a bit of a misnomer, but that's OK. We know what we mean. The second thing, of course, is that we are getting rid of the waste. And the third thing is that we are producing energy. It's an alternative form of energy. Um, waste is not going to go away, so it's, it's renewable. It's like solar, wind, other renewable forces, geothermal, etc. And uh, as I mentioned that, UTT is in the forefront of studying different technologies that we can use to substitute for the depleting or the depletion of, of the hydrocarbons. Um, we know there are two things that are happening at the moment. The price is down and the amount is decreasing, our production of both oil and gas. So we have to look much more seriously in Trinidad and Tobago at alternative sources of energy. Germany, I have visited Germany twice in the last two years. And every time I go, and I hadn't visited for about five years, I see these windmills, not, not the old ones that are uh, sort of tourist um, attractions, but the windmills that are there to produce to produce electricity. I spent most of my working life at UWI, a long time. I mean, I worked for about eight or nine years in industry, so I wasn't just an academic, doing degree after degree. But I spent a long time at UV. I'm still there. I'm what I call a professor emeritus. And uh, Jamaica and Mona, they started engineering a couple of years ago. So I went there to teach a course that they had nobody to teach. I would go for six weeks and accelerate the teaching of a course. And while I was there, on two occasions, I visited the, the Wigton um, farm, the, the wind, wind farm. And in Jamaica, they are producing about close to 40 megawatts of power from wind. We know, we know wind is, uh, what, what shall I say, it's, it's seasonal. Seasonal in the sense that the wind doesn't always occur. So you'll always have to, to need some sort of backup um, to supplement wind and solar. The sun is not always shining in a particular place on the earth, and the wind is not always flowing at the rate you'd want it to flow to generate electricity. However, they are producing 40, close to 40 um, megawatts of power. That's a lot. It may not sound too much for Trinidad and Tobago, which has well with the the leaving of Aslo metal, which at the peak use about 240, Trinidad still has about 1,200 peak megawatts power. So 40 doesn't sound very much for Trinidad and Tobago. But for all the Caribbean islands except the, the, the Commonwealth Caribbean, English-speaking islands except Barbados and Jamaica, it's a lot. Tobago, for example, that's their, their, their peak demand, about 40 megawatts. Grenada, all of them except St. Lucia, the largest one, that's either about their peak demand or more. So one can see that, that alternative energy can replace, to a large extent, the fuel that we use, the hydrocarbon fuels that we use in, in the Caribbean. And it will have to, at some point, as the prices come down, the technology gets better, 
to be used in Trinidad and Tobago, certainly solar and, and wind power. And in that regard, UTT has, has um, to use a local expression, taken in front. And we have on this campus, the Energy Campus, a solar house. It's a two-bedroom wooden house, but it's to demonstrate that without using any power from the national grid, we can use solar panels on the roof of a house to provide the energy needs for that, that structure. And just next to it, not far away from it, are two wind tunnels, again, to demonstrate to our students and, and, and the rest of the population to, to, to bring the awareness of the use and the ease with which we can generate power, electricity, from renewable sources. UDT also has an electric bus, and that, again, is to demonstrate the, the use of a cleaner fuel for transportation so that we would decrease the, the pollution that diesel engines tend to produce in the atmosphere and therefore um, have cleaner transportation system. So we welcome you here today to this energy campus. I, as a teacher at the university, sometimes when I forget my notes, thank God I, I know my subject matter well, and I, when I worked in industry, it was close to what I teach. So even if I forget my notes, I can go on for an hour or two in the class. In any case, whatever I tell these young people, they look at me in awe and they say, he must be talking the truth, even if, even if it is not. But I won't go on for an hour or two with, with you today. I know we have several other speakers and we want to get down to the actual nitty gritty of the presentations and not just hear me blabber on for, for too long. So again, I would like to welcome you to our energy campus and uh, hope that and trust and believe that the deliberations today, the, the outcome of the deliberations today would, would bear very tangible um, results, very tangible fruit, and that we have something very positive coming out of it so that we can, as I say, get that triple effect of waste to energy. In, in so many ways, methane, for instance, is a gas that is produced, very useful gas, but it has, I mean, what, 100 times or something, the, the, the greenhouse effect of, of um, other gases like, like carbon dioxide and so on. So that is one of, of the very, um, very important benefits of compacting and using our waste to generate energy rather than just dumping it in, in landfills. And the, the sites that we have in Trinidad and Tobago are simple dumps. We really don't do anything. We just dump the stuff there. We all have known the horrors that we get when we go to Port of Spain and there's some problem, a little fire or something in the Betham and so on, and how unsightly some of the other dumps are. So again, um, welcome to our energy campus, and uh, I know that we are going to have very positive outcomes from, from the deliberation today. So uh, thank you very much um, for having me, and I hope you notice I'm, I'm wearing a, a green uh, UDT shirt under my arm. Um, under my jacket, and, and my neck is too big or the collar is too small for a tie, so forgive the, the lack of a tie. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks. <laughs>